told Doug to get it from Ben, so you might want something he doesn't have. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Wayne's Loft. I am not Lean. I am J5, and I'm here with our uh, co-host, Soothing Lou. See, that was a better opening. I like that better. You know why? It's because... Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, different up, one. A little more upbeat. I like that. It's just different. You know, it depends on the show. Like, Wayne's Loft, I get hyped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good, good. And then our, our other show was like a pre-game show. A pre-game... I might not be so enthusiastic right. for pre-gaming. It's kind of back um, stage, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, a couple of things. Layton is going to uh, be a little late. As soon as he comes in, we'll switch. Uh, until then, I will go ahead and keep you guys company. Tyler, if you are, you are on the right YouTube feed, you can comment from the YouTube page. As you can see, I have it, and it's up. But it has to be the YouTube page with the full image of the show. There's two yes. YouTube streams going right now. The one with the full in image of the show uh, is good enough. It competes. Yes. Hello, Cody, Todd, Brandon, Daniel, Tom, Sean, Jim, Derek, Donald, Nick. What's up? John. Yep. Welcome. Welcome. So today we do have seven prizes to give away for you guys participating in the chat. Dougie Fresh is keeping track of all entries. It is unique. So everybody only has one entry into here. Kevin went Spanish on us today on Cinco de Mayo. Good for him. Kevin, ¿qué pasa, amigos y amigas? Todo bien, Kevin. Muy bien. Aquí soy con mi compañero, mi amigo. Lou. I should have known you had some. I knew you should have known you had some Spanish going on. I should have known. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. So yes, Dougie's keeping track. Um, there is no watch parties, so I don't want to see any hashtags. <laughs> yeah, we can let that go, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and today we give away seven prizes. Very First good, Kevin. place. <laughs> First place is going to get a free spot in our 2019 Elite Basketball box break. That's right, 2019 Elite Basketball. Looking for those big rookies like Zion, Ja, Rui. Um, RJ Barrett and so on and so on. Good class there. Second place is going to get a free spot in our 1963 Tops Baseball set break. Looking for those big Hall of Famers Mickey Mantle, Mays, Aaron, Koufax, Clemente, and so on. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are all getting BAM spots. Nice. Now, you guys are wondering what the hell is a BAM spot? Well, it's a perfect transition, Lou. Yes. How about you hit us with the event page with that beautiful background? Whoops, let me put it back in. There we go. There it is. Guys, if you go to event.vintagebreaks.com, you're going to see this amazing graphic of Mickey, uh, which uh, shout out to Gilded Social for creating that for us. This event Perfect. Page. And uh, if you scroll down, Lou, you're going to look for the Breaking Maniacs appreciation bonus. And I'll, I'll talk about the rest after. Should be down. More, a little more. There it is. As you guys can see, break a maniac. So it's an abbreviation for uh for that. It's bam. We're you gonna know, bam you up. The <laughs> only way to get into the bam bonus is you have to earn it. You cannot buy your way into it. You can either win it from bounties, from bonuses, uh random kinds of uh, random act of kindness, trivia questions. Uh, for example, Lou has a trivia question today. So the winner is not only going to get a prize, that person is also going to get a ban spot into this bonus. Now, this Breaking Maniacs Appreciation Bonus ends on May 16th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We, VB North here, will be mm -hmm. breaking all day from 12 to 10. And then, of course, we typically stay later than that because we have to give away all the bonuses. Um, but... At the time when it comes, when we have to randomize this list, the first person on top after the random is going to win fifteen hundred dollars of great credit to our website. Wow! To spend on whatever you want, it is good as cash. It counts for bonuses. It counts for offlines. It doesn't matter. It is. 
for you, you have 30 days to use it. It's, it does have expiration date on it. Okay. 30 days. Fair enough. What's up, Otavia? Welcome. Uh, and with this, you'll become, I think, uh, how many BAMs have we done so far? Sam, how many uh, Brickamaniacs Appreciation Bonus events have we done so far, you think? <laughs> four? -ish? Yeah, so I would say like between three and four of these we've done already. So you'll be you'll be one of the elite members uh, of this uh, winner circle, I would say. And we'll are you inducted selling these spots for ten bucks? Because a lot of people are offering a lot of money around for these spots at ten bucks a piece. For for which one? For they're offering Doug ten bucks a piece for these BAM spots. They're offering you ten bucks a piece for these BAM spots. Are you guys selling on the side here? Is that what that? Means? Oh, I mean, we'll take it, but it doesn't <laughs> promise you anything. You won't get anything from me. I mean, I'll, I'll still take donations. You know, um, we should definitely do that. You know, I talked about this before, Lou. Like when we first started creating the idea of vintage breaks, we we're like, well, what can we just get like donations, like a donation button on the website. If yep. you like the breaker, if you like what he's doing, if he gets you some good stuff. You mean you like a tip jar? You want a tip jar? Like a place? tip jar. Yeah, I, I can't say tip jar because, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not dealers per se. Um, but donations. Like, yeah. I like the way J5 breaks. I like the way he handles the cards. I like the way he smiles, his hair, his whole appearance. I love it. Donation button. Here's yeah. $5. That would be cool. But I guess the idea just never came into fruition. Um, I think that would be a great idea because if I start breaking, I can just have my girlfriend behind me while I'm breaking. <laughs> Friggin if you like my that girlfriend, was... hit the donate button. Yeah, if you like my girlfriend, hit the donation button. <laughs> Brian, where's the tequila? The tequila <laughs> is waiting for me uh, in the car as soon as I punch out. Um, I'll take a shot. Well, actually, no, that's not good. Uh, I can't drive. You can't drink don't, don't, don't drink. I'm not. I'm not sponsoring that. I'm not. I'm not saying you should do that. Um, it's at home. The tequila bottles at home. Yes, and I will drink some when I get home. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but uh, Kurt Schilling does these live broadcasts now. Where does basically, he? where he's just sitting in his hobby room, putting together model chips or whatever the hell he's putting together, and he just talks, right? While he's okay. watching a game or something. And across the top of the screen, you see tips or donations coming across. 50 cents, a buck, stuff like that. Yes, those are donations. Yes. Kurt Schilling's bringing in money. Kurt Schilling can talk about the, the postal man and, <laughs> and people would just donate. They're like, oh, that's a great story. Here's $10. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I bring entertainment. I bring like all this breaking goodness to everybody. I should at least get you know donate a dollar, right, Esther? You should be my first donation. Dogecoin, yeah, we were accepting Dogecoin, yeah. Do you accept doggy coin? Uh, no, Chris, unfortunately not. Uh, I take cryptocurrency. That'd be great. Dogecoin is cryptocurrency. No yes. idea. Is it doggy coin? Yep. Not a good one. No. But... It's not a good cryptocurrency, but it's okay. I guess it is a cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, that goes perfectly with something I have to. That's true, Tyler. That's true. Well, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Uh, yes, yeah, the Brick and Manix appreciate bonus. Yes, uh, that one winner is going to win fifteen hundred dollars. Yep. Sunday, May sixteenth, shortly after ten p.m. Eastern time. Now, Lou, let's scroll up and start from the top with our buying spots. Uh, here's how to enter or down lower. Oh yeah, sure. How to enter, guys? All you gotta do is visit vintagebreaks.com. Uh, there's three different bonuses. So there's three different things you can get into. There's our buy any spot, there's our VIP, and there's our platinum VIP. The buy any spot, the price point does not matter. As long as you purchase anything from March 29th until May 16th, you get an entry. The price point does not matter. It is just the spots. We're gonna randomize that list again shortly after 10 p.m. Eastern time. The top 25 are going to get prizes. I'll go over the prizes in a little bit. The other one is the VIP bonus. The VIP is same time frame, March 29th to May 16th. But the system accumulates all your purchases. If you accumulate to a thousand dollars, you're going to get an entry into the VIP. If nice. you accumulate to three thousand, you get three entries into the VIP. So on and so on. Sunday night, we randomize the list. The top three are going to get prizes. I will go over that in a little bit. And the last one is a platinum VIP. Same concept, same time frame. 
Accept is the increments of 5,000. So you commit to $5,000, you get one entry into Planet VIP. If you commit to 10,000, you get two, so on and so on. And let's go over the prizes, Lou. Let's go over the binding spot first. There it is. The top 25 will get prizes. First place, Lou, it is the man. He is, ah, he's just so good. He is so good right now. Uh, first place is going to win a 2018 Prism Luka Doncic rookie PSA 10. I have this card actually in my personal collection in that grade. Uh, his value, it just keeps going up as he gets better. Uh, Dougie, what's the average right now? Is it uh, averaging a double double? Obviously, is it close to that triple double a game? I don't know. He doesn't hear me. He's like, he's not like. <laughs> I just heard it. Um, there you go. He'll yeah, find out for me. Double. He's averaging a triple double. Just about. Just about. Yeah, this guy's on fuego. Fuego, Lou. Yep. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, he, oh, you see the picture there. There's the Luca. I'm gonna hold up to the camera. I have it in my hands. There oh. he is. PSA 10, Luca, rookie. Um, What's the going see, rate on something like that right now? Uh, right now, I think he's a couple thousand dollars in retail. Okay. Yep. Couple thousand. Uh, second place is going to get a Mickey Mantle signed baseball on the sweet spot. Uh, it does have a PSA letter of authentication. If you scroll down a little bit, Lou, you can see the Mickey uh, ball. There it is. Gorgeous signature. Right in the sweet spot. Gorgeous ball. That is going to second place. As you can see, the list, third to 25th, they're going to get different types of things. Cards, break credit, unopened wax packs, all for your breaking pleasure. At the top 25 will get in. Of course, whoever gets that Luca, man, you're going to love it. I personally will hold on to it, but if you want to sell it, now's a good time. The playoffs are about to start. I think the last regular game is next week. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Then the playoffs start. And right now, I think they have the seventh seed? Yeah. Fifth seed. They have the fifth seed. Hey, this um, may be my NBA ignorance, but who decides the Luka Doncic is number one and the Mickey Mantle signed ball is the second price? Uh, it's just retail value. Um, retail. Also, okay. because we wanted to mix vintage with modern. Mm-hmm. So the vintage comes in the VIP. Yep. The modern ended up here in, in the binding spot. So and everybody knows Luca Doncic. Like it's just there's not one person who loves basketball or watches basketball that doesn't know Luca. Yep. Um and if you scroll down, Lou, we'll jump into that VIP bonus. Here's our vintage. First place in the VIP. Again, you have to accumulate to a thousand dollars to get a spot. First place is going to get a 56 tops Mickey Mantle PSA 3. PSA 3. That is your hit for the VIP. Gorgeous card. The uh, 56 tops Mantle is very expensive because this is when he first hit, uh, he first got his triple crown. Oh, nice. Yep. So this card has a lot of uh, history behind it that for that year. Um, so that's why a lot of people love this mantle. I personally love the design as well. Yep. Um, and as you can see, this is the design we use for the banner. So first place is going to win that mantle card. Second place. Oh yeah. There's the design right there. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Second place is going to win $2,500 in break credit. Wow. Uh, it's also his first top since 1953. Yeah, you go. Cause he had that nice hiatus with bowman that's right yeah good call daniel uh yeah twenty five hundred dollars for second place to use on our on our website again it does have a 30-day expiration date uh and third place is going to get a 2018 tops update baseball hobby box 36 packs and we are looking for the four big rookies from that year including ronald acuna who's on fire Mm -hmm. Am I right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, looking for Shohei Otani, rookie. Mm -hmm. We're looking for Glaber Torres, rookie. And we're looking for Juan Soto, rookie. Juan Soto. So those four big guys are in that year. Uh, that box is hot. You can break it if you win it. You can hold on to it. Don't open it. You can sell it. Uh, it's just a great box. Uh, it's so much fun to open up 36 packs, though. That's what I would do. I will yeah. open it up. <laughs> um, 
but those were your top three for the VIP. Now, the Platinum VIP. The Platinum VIP is a, uh, oh, man, it's such a good one. We started doing this, I think, two events ago. Uh, this is the third time we're doing it. If you scroll down, Lou. Okay, hang on. You'll, you get to see the... Um, oh, there we go. Yep. yep, you get to see the prize. So same plat, uh, same concept, except you have to accumulate $5,000 to get an entry. Uh, it's a winner take all, only one winner. Once we randomize the list, first person on top is going to get a complete set of the 1962 Tops baseball cards. Wow. Yeah. It includes all the Hall of Famers, Mantle, Mays, Aaron, Banks, uh, Colfax, Clemente, you name it. As all of them. Roger Maris is card number one. Uh, I believe that's because he was uh, he that hit the most home runs. After he got the 60 home runs. Yeah, he broke the record. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's card number one in this set. Um, tough to get centered because it's card number one. But uh, yeah. One individual is going to get this entire set for the Planet VIP. So that is our big event, guys. And May 16th, we're very close to getting to that date. It's going to be amazing. Um, hope you guys get in. All you have to do is spend three dollars to check out to get one spot, and that will get you to the, into the uh, buying spot bonus. So. Uh, Stephen Garrett wants the 2018 Hobby Box. Of course, Stephen. Of course. <laughs> Brian Deli loves the 62 tops. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, Kevin asked how uh, the cash prizes VB, uh, the credit uh, prizes VB exclusive, or can these be and just collect as well? Uh, VB exclusive. <laughs> VB exclusive. Yes, it's only for vintagebreaks.com. Uh, it's as good as cash. Speaking of cash. The money maker just walked into the office here. <laughs> uh, he is just, he's dropping hundreds like nothing. Look at him. Nice. Uh, all over my desk, too. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna, Lane's going to jump on in a little bit. Uh, so that's a big event, guys. It's going to be so much fun. Can't wait. Also, we're going to do a lot of bonuses that day. Uh, myself, S10, Dougie Fresh, we're all going to be here in yep. the office. <laughs> Big day. Big day. Uh, so, uh, since Lane is here, I, I don't think I'll have time to do the trivia question for a prize. Maybe you can, you can do it with him, uh, Luke. Sure. When he jumps on. Uh, what's the comment say? What's up, Matthew Townsend? Kevin Gretzen, what's going on? Stanley oh, Benson? No, Who's Stanley? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Oh, I get Stanley. I get it. Didn't get my own joke. <laughs> Hey, listen, you guys, we don't have watch parties anymore, but one way you can help us out, if you would like, is to share the show on your favorite hobby group. Just go share it. So put yes. It up, bring some more friends over and uh, let them get to know us and have some fun with us. Right. Yep. Uh, also, Roger Maris won the MVP the, uh, the year before that, so that's why he's also featured as the number one card yep. in the 62 set. <laughs> Rocco, that's too bad. Go have some tequila while you're watching. There. Happy Cinco de Mayo, Rocco. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's give away a band spot for a okay. trivia question. On the fly, Lou. I know you have one already from the other one, but do you happen to have another one in here? Another one in the tank? Oh, I might. Give me a second. Sure. Guys, if you're registered to the website, we can add you to the band bonus. If oh. you're not registered, please do so. It's free. Okay. What was the last major league venue that the Beatles played in. Ooh, that's a good one. The last ballpark that the Beatles played live in. And that's a lot of Beatles fans in the chat, so that could be easy or it must be Googleable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's Googleable. Uh Daniel has it. Candlestick Park. Was the Candlestick last Park. <laughs> yep. Yes. Dougie. Why don't you give Daniel Lynch a band spot for getting that trivia question correct? Yep. And Daniel Lynch is uh, registered. He is one of our uh, cool brick and maniacs in the community. Yep. Uh, he joins a lot of separates. He loves those separates. Right, Daniel? Daniel's also a music guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lucky James Actor wasn't on. <laughs> James is on. I thought I saw James too. I Did you? Saw... Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, Jace Actor, part of Karma Records in Indianapolis. 
We've got another trivia question coming. If, if Leighton wants it, we've got another trivia question. Uh, oh, yeah. You guys can chit-chat about that, yeah. Let me get this one because I'll never be able to do this as a trivia question. And I'll ask yeah, sure. And there's no prize for this, everyone. There's no prize for this. I'll tell you what, we'll go on BAM spot. We'll go on BAM spot. Okay, BAM spot. This player would have to have gone O for his last 1,183 at bats for his average to dip below 300. This player wow. would have had to gone O for 1,183 at the end of his career to, for his average to dip below 300. Man, it's not a great trivia question, but it's fascinating as hell, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be very fascinating. I, I'm this is how good this guy was. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. who's on the spark. Got it. And oh. ESPN reporter, Chris Co. Yep. He seems so nice. He's a good guy. I mean, oh, I missed this answer. What's this answer? She paused. She's like, I know you're at work. Is Chris really Co. The TikTok he was doing, like, uh, I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry, Jim Lammers got it. I have to say, Jim Lammers came. I have it first from Jim. Oh, Jim Lammers. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah Dougie, Jim Lammers gets a band spot. Yeah. I think he is registered. Late, you're all set? Yes. I'm awesome. sorry, Chris. Tony Gwynn would have had to have gone 0 for 1183 at the end of his career to but fall below. Uh, all right, Lou, I'm going to switch with Late. Thank you again for keeping me company. Just, like, do some, like, quick flyovers I'll catch you later. The, uh, we'll see you later. 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah sixes. Cool. And then uh, their logos on mine. So I like it. I like it. Um, Gretzky. Look at the emails. Yeah. Afternoon, everybody. Jim Lanners. Yeah. Hey, Lou, how are you? Layton, what's going on? What's up, gang? Yeah. Welcome to Layton's Loft. A little bit of a delayed opening for myself, but J5 was very timely. Uh, he told me he was going through the promo and the big event and all that great stuff. <laughs> Yep, we went through promos. We went through the uh, website, saw how everything was set up, asked a couple of trivia questions. Got another one in the tank if you want it. Oh, I have a Seinfeld trivia question in the tank. I'm excited, Lou. Do you? Excellent. Yes. All right, excellent. Hey, what's up, Matt, Donald, Mike, Kev, Stephen, rest of the gang. Thanks for joining us here at Layton's Loft, our weekly uh, podcast. Uh, you can find us every Wednesday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, what's up, Chris? So speaking of Mr. Co, I wanted to uh, have a little show and tell. This just came in for Mr. Chris Co. Purchase it for the uh, – I got to check with my brother-in-law, but I believe this is going to the brother-in-law and uh, Leighton um, R.J. Barrett collection slash investment. Um, it's a PSA 10 Contenders Optic um, Barrett Rookie, number to 149. Yeah, number to 149 right there. Nice looking card. I wish he would uh, sign a little bit more than RJB. Yeah. You stop for enchiladas on the way? That's what Tom was wondering. No, but I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So tomorrow there's a little bit of a change in schedule. Uh, for those that um, uh, do not know outside the office. Uh, so Emily's last full-time day will be on Friday for us. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, you know, we're yeah. certainly going to miss her. Um, but, you know, we understand that she's going to be going to law school. And, you know, frankly, we don't provide that education here at Vintage Breaks. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Emily, we certainly wish you the best. Um, but we're going to be celebrating not just Emily, um, you know, leaving us. When I say full time, um, Emily's actually going to be working for us part time nice. uh, while she's in school. You know, I think it's fantastic to not only, you know, of course, uh, still have her involved in our uh, operation, which she was vital in uh, for the last several years, um, but also as her and I have joked, it's really a lot better way to earn, you know, kind of beer money or pizza money or, or you know, law school book money yep. uh, than like going into a pizza shop and stinking at 1130 and dealing with, you know, <laughs> folks yelling at you late at night, you know, or whatever the case may be. So uh, we're really excited that she's going to uh, continue to be part of our team. However, we're going to be going out tomorrow to celebrate. And so as God uh, was kind enough this week, it looks like it's going to be good weather oh, uh, as we're eating on side, Lou and gang, because not everyone's you know fully vaccinated. So we want to consider that. Um, so we'll be eating outside uh, at a really great steakhouse uh, called Steakhouse 85 in New Brunswick. You can Google it. I do plan to do a FaceTime slash, uh, not FaceTime, uh, Instagram live uh, from the restaurant. But nice. I want to tell you how serious I'm taking this celebration and, of course, wishing uh, Emily the best, but also a celebration of our staff and all the hard work that we put in. Now, Chris Gilmore won't be here, but he'll be here in spirit. Drew won't be here, but he'll be here in spirit. Sir Charles as well. Um, so, gang, I, I haven't announced this yet to the staff, 
uh, I plan to take an Uber tomorrow to work <laughs> so that I can, let's just say, not watch what I'm drinking with dinner. <laughs> dinner starts at 4 o'clock, okay? <laughs> so um, the reason why we're doing this is, you know, we, we obviously have our businesses to run. So we're going to go live from like 1 to 3.30, 1 to 4. Gilmore is going to go live from 4 to 7 with an asterisk is that there's drinking involved. Uh -oh. So it's kind of like a ball game. Like when you have a ball game, you don't really know if you're going to go to extra innings. Listen, <laughs> when you have a party of like approximately 10 people that haven't been out yep. to eat or drink and to be merry and God knows how long, like there could be some unforeseen for circumstances, which is why, once again, I'm not driving. Nice. I'm taking an Uber. And to give you some perspective, it's going to cost me, oh, I don't know, in the neighborhood, the neighborhood of $95 to $110 round trip, round trip, um, from my home to the office slash uh, Steakhouse 85, and it's worth every penny for two reasons. One, to be able to relax with the staff and enjoy and celebrate, and two, because you know, oh, you know, I'm fine to drive. Sure, yeah, listen, take all of that element out of it um, and just know that you can get an Uber uh, you have to have a mask. So if I don't have a mask, I guess I'll be walking home. It'd be take a while. Um, but to be fair, I probably could buy a mask. But I thought about this. How do you buy a mask if you can't go into a store without a mask? It's a really nasty equation. I've run into that dilemma. I sent someone with a mask. I was like, buy me a mask. It's like, it's like bribing someone when you're 16 to get beer for you. Like, hey, mister, can I give you 20 bucks to get me a mask? Like, why don't you get it yourself? I, I can't. Well, if it helps, I mean, earlier this week, I walked into the New Hampshire State Liquor Store without a mask, just forgot it. And when I got in the door, I went, yeah, I did that. Ugh. And a, her, a woman walked by me, she goes, you want a mask? She goes, yes. So she went and pulled out a pile of worker there and gave it to me. So, Oh, very nice of her. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, we're, you know, of course, happy to celebrate. But also, you know, it's great to support the local economy. I don't sound too corny, but I mean, you know, I, I can't speak from where you all are from, whether it be in New Jersey or across the country uh, or frankly, probably across the world. I don't know of a single town that doesn't have at least several restaurants that have kind of bit the dust, yep. uh, you know, during everything. So um, they called today to confirm. And so I called them back to confirm. I said, I just want to verify we're going to be outside. Um, and, uh, you know, I said, if you want, I'm happy to order like some appetizers now. <laughs> to be fair, kudos to my wife. Julie's like, well, you don't want to get there and have it be like a 20 minute delay. And I said, well, I already know I'm going to drink. Should I kind of like I order my drink, you know, as well? Like, I'm ready. <laughs> That's what the drink is for. That 20 minutes of delay. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Justin's very smart. So, Justin, if you have time tomorrow night, I would say from the point these folks get back to the office, plus I'll be excited. Who knows? Maybe I'll come back to the office, too. I have no really transportation. I'll be riding with the wind, going with the wind. There you go. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow night. Uh, you know, looking forward to celebrating with the team. Uh, or most of the team. Where's Em going to school? Uh, Emily, uh, everyone would like to know, I didn't want to mispronounce uh, exactly where you're going, so I know the state you're going to. I don't know the exact name of it. Uh, law school I'm going to is Ohio Northern Law School. Ohio Northern Law. Nice. The Petite School of Law, but that's... Very cool. Now, Emily, do you plan to specialize, uh, or you're going to law school to try to figure out what kind of law you'd like to practice? So at this time, I want to go to law school to become a public defender. Okay. But I also want to keep my options going into law school because I haven't had much experience with the legal system um, with regards to the law lawyer end of it. Sure. So it all sounds well and good for those who couldn't hear. Uh, Emily's interested in helping society, which I can tell you that when Julie and I started dating, Julie had every intention of helping society. Now, she still does as a lawyer. She just gets paid handsomely to do so. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I bring it up only because uh, there was a time I remember. Um, I'm not sure if John will remember this or not, but Robert definitely will. But he's up front. So there was a time where Julie was helping us. Um, at that point, there was no vintage break. So it was, just, it was only just collect. Um, and helping us, you know, part time. Who knows what that meant? You know, we're just very busy. It could have been shipping, whatever the case is. I do remember living in the city. And she would go on occasion to the 24-hour post office. And she always remarked to me the kind of interesting people that she would meet going at these off hours. So you can yeah. imagine the New York City 24-hour post office. Yeah, wow. Like, you're going to you're gonna meet an interesting, you know, cross group of people, let's just say. Yeah. So um, uh, towards the, uh, let's say, latter part of law school, um, she was still helping us. 
Uh, and I remember I came home uh, one day and she was very upset. I mean, really like on the verge of tears or had already cried and um, basically had said, you know, I, I can't work for, for, for just collect anymore. And I'm like, Oh, I'm thinking like, are we breaking up? <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess it's an interesting way of like breaking up with someone. Like I can't work for your business anymore, but I might've just led with like, I don't want to see you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, and anyway, the lead there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Julie was like really upset that she was going to fail the bar. She was spending too much time working with Just Collect. And so, you know, the good thing is I said, hey, it's not to worry, right? Like, we got it covered. We'll figure it out, honey. You know, it's, it's great. I'm really excited to be able to, like, you were able to help us. And, you know, it was, it was a nice part of our relationship, especially early on. Um, the bad part of it was, like, that moment forward, carte blanche. I was like, no, whatever you need. You know, we weren't married yet. I just want to keep in mind. Right. I would go into my wallet, like, the next morning. I was, I'm not one of these, I don't count my money, but like when you go to buy a bagel and you're like, wait a minute, there's no, there's no money in the wallet. I know there was money there yesterday and we didn't have Argon yet. I'm thinking, what's going on here? So I remember checking in with her. Oh, she's like, oh, I needed 20. And then it kept, I needed 20. She's like, you told me you would give me whatever I needed. <laughs> no, no, I definitely did, counselor. Um, so... <laughs> The, the office is enjoying the story. Hopefully you are all enjoying it as much as they are. Um, but needless to say, uh, Emily, she, um, in the beginning of her career, you know, had different aspirations of practicing, you know, various kinds of law. And, you know, listen, let's be honest, when you graduate with a variety of, of debt, right, you know, to go to school, to higher education, you know, things start to sway your decision-making process. And so Julie, as I think you know, Emily, did corporate law for Cahill, Rindell, Gordon in the city for uh, New York City for quite some time. And then, you know, almost no one makes partner there. And I remember having the discussion and being able to support her and said, hey, you know, I really like to go into family law, um, but, you know, not sure like it pays the same. And so I'm like, listen, I sell baseball cards, you know, like, I, <laughs> yeah. meaning like I'm clearly, you know, other than to be fair, if you can get me alongside Jeter on second, like I'm pretty much doing what I want to do. Right. Um, so, you know, like I'm not going to stand in your way of doing that. Let's, you know, go for it. And needless to say, what's really cool is that uh, she started off, um, you know, in let's say family and matrimonial and, um, you know, kind of forging her career and the experience and such. And then she ended up crossing paths with uh, a particularly, um, you know, let's say s small group uh, of people that were very close knit and they actually split off from a large law firm. Um, and they uh, started their own law firm. You know, Julie's not a partner there, but she's of counsel, whatever that technically means. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a boutique law firm that's handled the, you know, the, the divorces and, and uh, uh, estate planning of, let's say, a variety of colorful characters such as Madonna oh. or Tambro Dorr. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, uh, I think, uh, who is uh, Uma Thurman? Oh. Uh, Uma Thurman was, uh, she gives me some, you know, some nice juicy gossip, which I'd love to share, believe me. Yeah, who got the sword, <laughs> Uma or her husband? I'm sorry? Who got the sword, Uma or her husband? Very good question. We'll have to have Julie as a guest in the loft <laughs> to see what kind of gossip she's allowed to share. And I pretty yeah. much know it's almost none of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not. I don't, I'd, be just being, talking. <laughs> I'd be nervous being married to a family law lawyer. Oh, I'm very nervous, man. Why do you think I'm on pills? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so folks, this is uh, courtesy of Chevy Chase and our friend Patrick Ganino. This is uh, what I showed off last week. I don't know if you could see this, Lou, uh, well. Do you want me to show it off on the other camera? You got to get the show off it, but we can do it on the desktop camera. Okay. Is this better like this, Lou? Yep. There you go. Okay. So this is um, one of the cool... Uh, you know, special edition Chevy Chase mass um, that Patrick Anito helped Chevy and his uh, group put out. Nice. Kind of cool. It's got something on the inside too, doesn't it? Yeah. I guess it's reversible if I had to get, you know. Yep. Be the ball, little Chevy Chase <laughs> quote Caddy from Caddy Shack. Shack. Yeah. So we're going to give that away uh, right now, but we're going to do that. I don't have any Chevy Chase trivia, but what I do have is Seinfeld trivia, Lou. Okay. 
And I'm going to ask, uh, I'm just going to double check, you know, the answer. Oh, yeah, it's great. So, because I did not know this, and there was very few on this list I didn't know. We're just going to go with the street address, not the apartment, because yep. I feel like that's, you know, that's next level. Yep. Um, but the first person on the loft to name the street or the fictitious street that Jerry Seinfeld lived on uh, in Manhattan in New York City on the show Seinfeld will win this um, Chevy Chase mask as well as a $10 break credit to Vintage Breaks. And if you spend that $10 break credit before next Sunday, which is, I think, the 16th. Um, let me just clarify. Uh, the 16th uh, at um, G5. When do we cut off um, uh, everything? At 10 o'clock? Yep. At uh, 10 p.m. Uh, for 10 o'clock next Sunday, the 16th, our big event will end. All the details can be found at event dot vintage breaks dot com. Oh now, wait, who just got eighty first? Is that Benson? Is Benson right? West eighty first street. It's West eighty first. Yes. Yep. Benson was first. Congratulations, Melch. You got a ten dollar break credit and this pretty cool Chevy Chase mask. Sam, if I can give that to you to uh, get ready for the Melch. Ken, I think had the apartment five A. Was it five? It did. It was five A. Now, J5, if I want to pull up the uh, State of the Hobby blog on here and show that on the screen, how do I do that? Could you? Uh, uh, you have to get, uh, Luke, the website. Okay. So, Luke, can you go to our blog, please, at justcollect.com? Okay. Hang on. Slash blog, I believe. And I collaborated on this with Monty, and I wanted to talk about the State of the Hobby uh, article that we just wrote here at Just Collect. Hey, what's up, Andy? How are you? Welcome. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to click on, go up top there, Lou, and see where it says blog? Yes. Click on blog. And click on that state of the heart, state of the cards and memorabilia collecting hobby. Live. Okay. Very great. Thank you. So uh, this is something I put out um, because I've been speaking with several people, Lou, and you can appreciate this. Uh, you know, across a variety of different uh, media platforms. So folks that may want to interview me, let's say for radio sure, yeah. um, or a podcast, and they're like, hey, you know, what kind of blogs or what, what kind of articles, you know, have you put out? And I said, actually, hundreds of them. Um, and so now I'm getting, of course, texts from a variety of different people. Hey, you know, I used to have that. You know, are you still buying? Yeah, I'm still buying it. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> But what I found, Lou, in speaking uh, to a variety of different people, was one common theme, one little bit of a little bit of a void, if you will. And they said, "Hey, you know, I'd love to ha see, like, I'd like to send to the radio station a little bit of a clip or an article on the state of the hobby, but summarized. You know, not something that's going to take them an hour to read, right? Or they got to come back and read eleven different, you know, posts about it. Just yep. something, you know, nice and succinct. Um, and so." Uh, you know, Lou, what I'd like to do here is just kind of talk through it because it was fun to put together, um, and I think it would make great content for the loft today. Right. So I'm just going to read uh, the uh, initial paragraph here, and for those who'd like to check out the full article, uh, you can do so on our blog at justcollect.com slash blog. Um, and if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to our Layton's Loft Facebook page, so that way you'll know yes. every Wednesday when we go live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Never know who will show up here. Sometimes it's Dave Parker. Other times uh, it's going to just be Lou and I. Um, right now in the hobby of our cards and memorabilia, it's changed a lot over the last year, and it is very easy to miss updates. And so really that's where this, this article came from um, in this update so that someone who's not in the know can read this in five or six minutes and have a good idea of what's been going on, Dougie, you know, over the last you know, year, 18 months. Um, and so what's really wild in doing my research, so since uh, COVID started, you know, roughly speaking, when I say started in, in the sense of, uh, you know, on United States soil that, you know, it was announced to our public, um, you know, last, what, February or March, Lou, um, that the uh, most expensive card record has been broken five times. And if you scroll down just a little bit, Lou, um, our, our folks will be able to see uh, those um, five different sales that we talk about here. And of course, uh, tied up top is the 52 Tops Mickey Mantle. Um, it's actually uh, a PSA 9. So you make a note to text Monty uh, a little bit of a typo in there. 
Um, uh, so it's a PSA nine that Rob Go bought privately for five point two million dollars, and then also um, our friend Jack from um, uh, sold his O three Upper Deck Exquisite uh, for five point two um, million dollars. Uh, I believe it was Jack, but I. I I want to clarify with Ben before we uh, say for sure. And then you see the Luca National Treasures sold for 4.6. The 09 Bowman Chrome Super Factor uh, of Mike Trout um, sold for $3.9 million. Uh, and then the 06 Wagner PSA 3 sold for $3.7 million. Um, and so, you know, I put the question or I pose a question below that, Lou, you know, what's going to be the next card to break the all-time sales price? And when you think about, you know, something like that, you have to consider, well, what's actually going to be sold? So just because there's a 52 tops mantle, there's actually three of them in PSA 10. Um, yes, if it's sold publicly, let's say in the next three months, 100%, it would beat that record. But I don't know that anyone's going to sell one of their three 52 top mantles. So it's always interesting to kind of ponder and 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 think about, um, you know, along those lines. So well, I'm not sure if I hit something on my end, but I wasn't able to hear you uh, just chatting there. Hey, Sam, I'm not sure if you could grab J5 or, you know, one of those, but we're having some technical issues. I'm not able to hear Lou. Yeah, I might have it here. Get, get me back. Oh, I can, I can hear you now, Lou. Okay. Which card, the card that breaks the sales record, will it be a modern card or a vintage card? Because there are a couple of so-called modern cards on this list of five, aren't there? Oh, there, there is, absolutely. And so that's kind of what I was alluding to, Lou. We don't know what's going to break the record next because it really is up to, let's say, those respective collectors, investors that are holding those assets, who wants to basically take profit and move, you know, move on. So, you know, to me, a very clear choice would be a 52 Mantle 10, but I don't know that any one of the three owners are going to sell. Right. So if I had to guess, I actually think it's more likely to be a modern card because I think there's more available and people are a little less attached to them. Yeah. But I could be wrong. It's a great and question, Lou. What gets a modern card up to this value? Is it because it's a one of one or it's a, a special edition or a limited edition? How, how, do, how does a modern card draw this type of uh, return? Great question. So for example, um, for number three on the list, and by the way, if you could also text Monty to add in Mike Trout, because it just says Bowman Chrome Super Factor. He's actually on. He can hear you. Oh, well, wonderful. He That's even updated the uh, PSA 9 pack. Great. So just ask him to, uh, well, if he's listening, if you could update and just say on number three, the Bowman Chrome Mike Trout Super Factor. Um, so in that case, Lou, that was a one of one. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the exquisite rookie patch autograph of LeBron that just sold for $5.2 um, that was numbered of 23. So in both cases, you're talking about very, you know, low uh, numbered in one, yeah. in one case, one of one, in the other case, one of 23. Sam, what I always found interesting, um, it's taken me years to, to kind of come around on it, but I have now, I don't have to agree, I just have to appreciate, um, is this idea of manufactured scarcity. So in yeah. other words, the Mickey Mantle PSA 10, yes, there's only three tens, but there's only three tens, even though there was, uh, who knows how many produced, a lot more than, than, than 23 LeBrons or one, you know, Mike Trout super factor. So it was always hard for me to wrap my mind around the idea that these card companies produced only one Mike Trout super factor or only 23 LeBrons, almost making it like a Willy Wonka type, you know, ticket and making it be so valuable. Because when I was a kid, like, that's not how you collected. I'm not saying it was right. right. It's just, I wasn't accustomed to that. And so even still, cause I'm in that, you know, uh, I got the gray hairs, but I'm not so old where I don't know, you know, Instagram and TikTok. At the same time, I'm not hip, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so my point is, is that in regards to like, you know, the modern $5 million broad or three and a half or three, nine, you know, uh, million dollar trout, you really have to understand the card market and the players and, and, and the investors and the money that's coming in off the sidelines to really appreciate it. Um, but I would say that, you know, you, you, you put me to a decision and you say, hey, can I buy a $5 million vintage deal or a $5 million modern deal? I mean, nine or 10 out of 10 every time, I'm going to tell you that I want to buy vintage. Um, doesn't mean I'm right. It's just what I'm comfortable with. Yep. Uh, it's what I can appreciate. It's what I have the most experience with. Um, and, you know, it's just that's what I would go with. All right. And I have to ask this because my mind boggles every time I think about this. And I have a pack so far. Yeah, well, how long before NFTs start to threaten this list? 
Well, it's interesting, Lou. So if you scroll down a little bit, we're going to talk about NFTs. Oh. You're stealing some of my thunder. So right, before we right. get to the NFTs, yep. we'll talk about PSA. Of course, PSA not only was sold, but PSA uh, suspended its grading services. Um, we're hoping that they're going to be reopening come July 1st. I've been hearing some good stuff, uh, you know, let's say on the grapevine um, uh, out there. You know, the murmurs are that PSA is almost caught up entering stuff into the system. What does that mean for the 10 or 12 million cards that are behind? All I can tell you is from firsthand, I'm actually getting cards back from PSA now. Oh. Not every day, not in huge volume, but we are getting some back. Um, so uh, speaking of uh, just the national, I did want to make mention. Um, I, I certainly don't want to. Where is it right here? So, Lou, I, I don't know for sure, but I read um, an article. Uh, and if you want to just switch off so we can show what I'm showing on the camera real quick. Hang on. On my phone. There we go. Oh. Which is the better camera to show it on, Lou? There yeah. we go. Yeah. So it says Chicago COVID restrictions. City is on track to be fully open by July 4th, the mayor says. So the National was supposed to um, give us an update by June 1st as to if the National was going to be happening at the end of July. So now I don't know if the National is going to be doing anything formally on June 1st. Certainly I'm anxious to hear from them. Um, my guess is if they do come out with something on June 1st, it's going to say, hey, it's predicated on what happens on July 4th with uh, the city of Chicago. Right. Um, fingers are crossed here, certainly. Um, I did want to make mention that if there is a national, whether it be our entire staff or part of our staff, we will be there. Uh, we will be set up. Um, I don't know exactly what breaking will look like, meaning with masks and stuff. I have no idea. I don't want to overpromise. Um but I do know that if there is uh, a national, I, at the very least, will be there. Um, and uh, if there is a national, we are going to have some sort of special Vintage Breaks event. I don't know if it'll be on that Thursday or Friday night or that Saturday night. Um, but uh, it'll be something fun to talk about over the dinner tomorrow uh, at Steakhouse 85, to talk about some of the plans for the national. And so for those that haven't already, uh, do yourself a favor. Just book a hotel, you know, reserve a room. Um, and then that way you can always cancel later on, uh, but you'll hopefully be able to join us and, and potentially thousands of people. Uh, admittedly, I am nervous about what it all means and what yeah. they're going to do with COVID. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, uh, I'm not in charge of that. I'm glad that it's not for me to decide. And so, for example, if they decide to have the national and they said, hey, you could have your mask off, I still wouldn't have my mask off around people because I don't know who's been vaccinated, who isn't. So these are the kinds of things, this is just very real business decisions that we'll be making here at Vintage Breaks and Just Collect, you know, prior to the convention. Um, but once again, we do hope that it's, you know, going to take place and we hope that we'll be able to meet, you know, uh, lots of you out there. Well, everyone's going to have to be adaptive from the national, the organization, the national on down. It's going to be very tight. They're not going to make a decision until July 4th. The national's at the end of July. Everyone's going to be scrambling. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, very much so. Uh, so, um, you know, I wanted to get back to the state of the hobby blog in just a minute, but I wanted to take the time to announce something really exciting. It's going to be taking place next Friday, um, May 14th at 8 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to be conducting our 1956 Tops baseball set break, which is now sold out. Nice. And in cooperation and partnership with the WhatNot app, I know uh, some of you folks may have heard of them, but many of you have not. Um, I encourage you to check them out. They're an app for you to, uh, you know, check out various forms of entertainment, including breaking, uh, people selling cards and such. And so uh, we recently agreed to uh, sign up and support the app. Um, thank you to the folks at Whatnot. Uh, we're going to be giving away, Lou, believe it or not, one free spot, which is a $250 value wow. in that sold out break on that next Friday night, right before the break happens. The only way to qualify though, is you have to follow the new Vintage Breaks account on the WhatNot app, on the WhatNot, the WhatNot platform in order to qualify. If you do, we will run a random with all those names and one lucky individual is going to win a free spot in the $250 1956 Tops Baseball PSA graded 
set break where you have a chance to win a Mickey Mantle PSA 7, a Jackie Robinson PSA 8, a Hank Garen PSA 8, a Willie Mays PSA It's going to be fantastic. Very much looking forward to it. Um, and looking forward to working with the folks from Whatnot. Nice. Always love new technology. Yes. And uh, I realize uh, we have a few other announcements, Lou, but let's try to pull up uh, the rest of the State of the Hobby blog so we can get through that and talk about NFTs a little bit. So let's scroll down. So you see as CSA has now entered uh, the marketplace grading cards, um, lots of people I know took advantage of sending in cards to them before they just raised their prices. Um, I myself, uh, you know, I know Gilmore was a little bit surprised and others had talked to me and said, Leighton, I'm surprised you're not kind of basically trying to submit tons of cards to them. Yeah. It's not that I'm anti-CSA, it's that I only have, you know, one set of hands. And so um, I just feel like, hey, I'll be able to uh, see what's going on with the market. If I pay a little bit more per card, but I see uh, where the market stands, that 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 information will be valuable. Um, I certainly wish CSG the best of luck. Um, you know, people uh, on some uh, sides of it love their holder. On other sides of it, they think it's disgusting. It's the same thing with any business, right? You start a new business, people are like, oh, it's a terrible idea. The other people, it's a great idea. You know, you just can't listen to people. You got to do your thing. So anyway, so anyway shout out to CSG and good luck to them. Um, for how the trading business hinges on the presentation, the actual holder itself. It's really interesting how big an issue that is here. Well, you know, when you think about it, Lou, uh, for me personally, it's not. Even though I'm a collector, um, you know, I'm not going to uh, – there are a few cards that I really like, for example, in SGC holders. I love the way they look against the black, um, like the way like a white, for example, tobacco T206 card looks in the black holder. Yeah. At the same time, you know, I, I prefer my card to be worth more money. So if that holder <laughs> is not the card that's worth – you know, it's not worth the most money in that holder, I'd probably prefer it to be in a different holder. But um, nonetheless, a uh, little um, update on SGC. I know they're not mentioned on here, Lou, yeah. um, but SGC did raise their prices recently. And for whatever it's worth, because I've graded both cards, I've graded cards with them now on both services. They're seventy-five dollar level. I think it's either two fifty or three hundred per card, the super duper expensive level. Um, they're both pretty fast right now. So I know seventy-five dollars a card is is a lot per card. However, it beats spending three hundred PSA. Uh, and so you know, I don't look at it as, hey, I'm really happy to pay seventy-five, or I'm really happy to pay three hundred. I'm just trying to look at it unemotionally and saying I'm doing business but I can understand uh, why there are folks out there that are upset. And so to those folks, what I tell you is what I'm doing with most of my cards. I'm only grading the cards I have to. And when the floodgates open and I can grade bulk and things are a little more reasonable, I'll send in lots of cards. Um, that's my approach. Some smart card company is going to allow you to design your holder to some extent, at least give you some options about backgrounds and things like that. Yeah, I think, I think HGA may do that, but I could be wrong. Anyway, quick note on fractional share companies, of course, Rally, Collectible, Otis. Um, if you're not uh, into the fractional share game, totally get it. You want to have the physical item yourself. Um, that, of course, lead us into the next discussion about NFTs. Um, I would say, though, that if you are someone who really enjoys the space, uh, Sam, uh, you know, I know you and I, for example, we all have basketball. Like, I'm not going to buck up and buy a $60,000, $100,000 Giannis card or Curry card. Yeah. But if you share with me and said, hey, man, you could buy a share for 25 bucks," And I looked at that card. I was like, you know, I don't ever see that card for sale. I think that um, some people are buying it because they think it's a smart investment. I think other people are buying because it it's cute and it's almost like a memento. And then there's the hybrid. Um, and I feel like for me, I'm more of a hybrid because, you know, if I really just want to buy and sell cards, like I already know how to do that. Um but I also do see the advantage of owning a fractional share, albeit tiny, of a super expensive asset in a space that I really love. And I'm never going to own a Ruth PSA 7. So, you know, this is a nice way to do that. And if that card doubles, well, my, my $25 share goes to 50 bucks. And if I own 100 shares and, you know, you, you catch my drift, you can make some money with it, but you have to be informed. Um, and so that's my two cents on the fractional share companies. And Lou, if we could... Uh, run through to, I think we get to, um, oh, retail stores. Here's the deal. Um, I don't know much about it. Monty's more on top of this than me, but from what I can see in general, I'm hoping that these policies will allow someone like myself. Certainly I don't need any cards. When I say someone like myself, someone with a six year old 
yeah. uh, boy or girl for that matter, that wants to walk into Target. They're buying some other stuff because their significant other told them that they have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I tried to do it with a straight face. I couldn't. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wow. Oh, shit. I'm at Target. Love to buy some cards. Yep. Five years ago, I did that. I'd buy a random pack of wrestling or a weird pack of football. And by the way, I don't even really collect it. I just liked it. It was kind of fun. Yep. You can't even do that. Now I stopped looking. So <laughs> I do think that if they're bringing that back, like that chance for someone who's going into a big box store like a Target or a Walmart, like I think that's fantastic. And if it ends up, you know, hurting flippers, you know, I'm not one of these guys who had the hate for flippers that some others did. Yep. But at the end of the day, um, I do believe – that the long-term health of the hobby is what's best for me as the owner of just collecting vintage breaks. Sure. And so if folks can now in a more economical and easy fashion, get these newer issues, I think it's great. Yep. So um, more people in the hobby means better prices and the whole hobby benefits. Yep. You know, Lou, I missed, I missed time the national. I was supposed to do my national announcement now, but it's all right. You know, I'm trying to, to beat the clock here by five 30. Um, so anyway, as we just went over the national, uh, we are hoping to see uh, each and every one of you there. Um, but in show news and in very exciting news, we are going to be setting up, Lou, and pulling up the dates. It is the week after the um, uh, big event. It is uh, going to be in Chantilly, Virginia. Yep. We're going to be there from May 21st to the 23rd. We're going there with myself, with Dougie, Chris Gilmore, Vintage Break South, and Ben, his first show for uh, Vintage Breaks. Super excited about that. Um, from what I've been told, gang, you have to wear your mask all day inside the show. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to be breaking from there. When I say best efforts, exactly what I mean. I don't know what it's going to be like right. for our team to be breaking, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours with a mask on. Um, but I definitely don't want to find Gilmore on the floor <laughs> coming back to the booth. So you've heard this yeah. on record, Gilmore. You don't have to break all day straight because <laughs> I, I have a feeling he's late. Well, you told me I had a break. You told me I couldn't get up, man. Yep. Um, so I just wanted the record to reflect that. Um, but nonetheless, um, just like the National, uh, Gilmore is going to put together some really fun in-show promotional bonuses, Lou, that nice. you'll only be able to get from us at Vintage Breaks if you show up to the convention and you're one of the first like dozen or 15 or 20 folks um, to get there. We're going to have some really fun uh, bonuses and, and promotions at the show. So hopefully you'll be able to stop on by. Um, live, live breaking is back, baby. Oh, I'm excited. You know, the only thing that I was bummed about, I asked, there is no athletes yet. They're hoping there'll be athletes at the July Chantilly show. Um, but, you know, it's all right. We'll, uh, we'll make do. Yep. Um, now, what, do we all, what else do we have to still cover? Yes, NFTs. So, top shot. Um, I'd have to say, Sam, um, I think the idea is cool in concept. Now that it's, the process is smoothing out to obtain packs, I think that's certainly better for the site. I have to say for me on a personal level, it, I've lost some of my excitement for it. Um, and I don't know exactly why. I think part of it is um, ease of to get packs. So like I had money, I'm a paying customer, but yeah, I couldn't buy any. And yeah. it's not as fun to just buy a random shot or random moment, right? I'd rather get that pack and experience what that feels like. Um, and then two, a lot of other places to spend my money. There's yeah. other NFT projects out there. I mean, Dar Ravel put me on the NFT horses. I mean, horse rate. I mean, it's like crazy shit. It'll blow your mind. It's um, funny. You were, you were talking about fractional shares. My girlfriend's daughter, 16, just turned 16, and I bought her a fractional share of a racehorse. You know, and it's 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 a great little thing because you get this owner's manual with it. You can actually go get a picture taken in the winner's circle if they win. You that's can cool. The horse. Uh, they have newsletters for it. It's it's really fun how this fractional share thing has taken over a lot of things, and that's something that lends itself nicely to a fractional share. Listen, it's entertainment. Let's yep. be honest. That's what this is. It's entertainment. And so, um, you know, if you are really a big fan of horses, maybe you'll check out that space. Yep. Uh, or it'll make a, a nice gift to someone um, but I'll tell you more than ever, I've been paying attention to Crosby's games and like, you know, the different utilities he wants. Like, why does he want yeah. this dragon? And like, I get it. You yeah. know, you don't have to agree with it, but understanding it, I believe for me will make me a better businessman um, as more as just, you know, a better well-rounded person to understand what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah and electronically, you remember the whole Pokemon thing? Remember, it's the, the, yeah. I just opened yeah, well, I mean, two days ago the Pokemon app where you just walk. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
it always struck me that this is something where baseball has to go, where you get some NFTs and you collect a team and actually get into some competition and things like that. And yeah, you know, baseball needs something like that. Oh, I agree. And I think it's coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think they see what's going on. So to finish up, as you see, Tops uh, entered the NFT market. Yep. Excuse me, Gary V. <coughs> Excuse me, just today. Check it out. Um, and then I think towards the end there, uh, and this is a shout out to, uh, it's funny, um, uh, of course, Layton's Loft every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. But uh, this is a shout out to Jimmy. And Jimmy actually is a real person. Um, so Jimmy is one of these folks who was trying to connect me with media uh, platforms, Lou. Yep. And he said, hey, you know, the one thing I, I believe, I mean, I really love the article, Layton. I, I learned a lot for someone who's kind of an outsider looking in. Um, but he said the one part that I think is missing is you got to realize a lot of these folks, like they're already into sports. They may have cards. They're going to want to know what to do. Yeah. So you're missing. And, and I'm like, oh, but it's all over my site. And he said, yeah, but they don't know that. Yeah. So what I try to do is make it very simple. Like, hey, if you have some 86, 87 clear basketball, what do you do? How do you grade your cards? Should you have them graded? Basically, try to make this an all-encompassing article that you could read in just a few minutes, but that it would be um, touching upon, you know, the various different uh, parts of the hobby that, that had been changing um, you know, a lot in the last 12 or 18 months. Excellent. So everyone check this out on the blog at justcollect.com. And of course there is the Michael Jordan Tupperware, which ultimately graded a PSA nine, which is unbelievable. Yep. Um, we are working on yet another 86 Fleer collection. I believe J five is, um, that is today's show. Layton's loft. You can find us here every Wednesday at 4 30 PM Eastern time. We're going to give away the seven prizes next with Sam, will be coming on our YouTube stream. You can find us at youtube.com slash vintage breaks. We'll be going live here until 9.30 tonight. And after that, we'll have Sir Charles, Vintage Breaks West. And a did you know fact, he's also 50% owner of the Vintage Breaks Sheldon and Sir Charles G fantasy baseball team. Oh. But admittedly, we've, Lou, we need some of your help. That's I'm, the problem. I'm always here. You know where to find me. I'm hoping there's enough time left in the season because let's just say. Oh, sure. It's just smart. It's just we have a goose egg in the wind column right now, Lou. Uh -oh. I was not proud of that whatsoever. Right. It's a head to head. <laughs> Sounds and, like Tight Wars team. Yeah. 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 So we got some problems, but we're dealing with them. <laughs> Management now is, is, is aware of the issues. I'll, <laughs> I'll do what I can to help you pull it together. Thank you, Lou. I'd love to have a feel good story for 2021, baby. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah.